Sanchez. I'm a founder and managing partner with uh, Lakeside Partners. Thank you very much for having me here. What an ICO is. Okay. I think you know what a cryptocurrency is. I hope so. And since this is a blockchain conference, I guess you have an idea what blockchain is. When I ask this in Switzerland, I would say even in Zug, which is basically the heart of the Crypto Valley, only 50% of the audience would know what Crypto Valley is. When it comes to an ICO, I would say 30%. When I talk about tokens, it's roughly 20, 10%. So, this is the proof that we are still living in a bubble when we are talking about blockchain, cryptocurrencies, tokens, ICOs, and the like. <clears throat> I hope I can uh, tell you more about some of these aspects. My colleagues after me, they will be talking about the Crypto Valley in detail, so um, I'll just give you a brief overview. So, um, we are a family of companies active in the uh, blockchain space. We sit at the heart of the Crypto Valley um, in Zug. Uh, you've heard of Vitalik Buterin, the founder of Ethereum. This was actually uh, founded and started up uh, in Zug. We, like the partners, we are an early stage uh, investment company. Uh, we're also an enabler and facilitator for startups that want to come to the Crypto Valley. Um, we organize events. Competitions. I will tell you more about that. We are involved in blockchain communications, um, in IT consulting, in co-working spaces and incubators uh, in the Crypto Valley, and we are about to launch uh, our uh, venture capital company called CBVC. Um, speaking of ICOs, ICOs is a way to raise funds through cryptocurrencies. Um, now this is already outdated, I guess, but the reason I'm showing you this is if you look at an ecosystem like the Crypto Valley and you narrow it down to the three most important pillars, I would say first comes talent and projects. If you have them, normally money follows, right? So you have capital. And then you need a strong infrastructure including regulation, authorities, service providers, universities, um, and even physical infrastructure. Now what happened in mainly in 2017 is roughly 50% of all the money that was raised through ICOs ended up in Switzerland and mostly in Zoom. That's quite remarkable, right? Now when it comes to the third part of an ecosystem, infrastructure, I think we can catch up. So for example, we don't have, or had, we didn't have a uh, co-working space in Zug. Now as I said, um, we are active in early stage investments. This is a common uh, life cycle of a company. Um, you know, if you, if you start, you have an idea, you become a startup, you get some co-founders, um, you grow, you will go through early stage, mid-stage, late stage, and maybe eventually um, you get to do an IPO and go public, right? And along these stages, different kind of fundraising occurs, right? So you might start with your family and friends, they give you money to start up your company, uh, you will talk to angel investors to become a startup, eventually you will get money from venture capitalists, maybe from institutionals later on, or from the public when you do an IPO. Now with ICOs happening, these things are about to change, right? Because what's happening is, a lot of these projects in very early stages get a lot of money. So let's say you raise 100 million right at the time when you start up your business. You don't need to raise money anymore. So maybe venture capitalists are not needed anymore. One to 30 days. It's quite obvious that this will have an effect on the venture capital industry. What does this mean for us? So 
When we uh, looked at the startup blockchain space uh, in the Crypto Valley, from an investor's perspective, uh, I would say late 2016, early 2016, um, we talked to everybody in the Crypto Valley. So we talked to the projects, to the Ethereum guys, to the authorities, um, to the service providers, and what we learned was there is an ecosystem, but a very fragile one. So it's not organized, it's not structured. The projects and activities are all scattered. For us, it meant we have to invest one step before early stage. We have to invest into incubation in order to bring the projects and the startups to a different and more mature level. For us, it meant to launch two activities. Number one was a launch of an event series. Now, this is a good way in order to tap into the space. What we did is we launched a competition for blockchain startups called the Blockchain Competition. And when we did that late 2016, we didn't focus on the finance area as everybody else was. We were focusing on insurance. And when we launched it, we had to add a price tag. Remember, this was pre-ICO craze. So no 100, 150, or 200 million ICOs at the time. And we added 100,000 US dollars. What happened is we were the biggest blockchain startup competition worldwide. So we got a lot of traction, a lot of attention. And finally, we ended up with over 100 uh, applications from over 37 countries all over the world. It was very successful for us. We are doing two more of these competitions. Now we are catching up and we are doing blockchain for finance and real estate. These competitions, they end up in our conference called the, Crypt the Blockchain Summit Crypto Valley, which is the second event series that we have launched. It was the first conference uh, in Zouk. Uh, we have a very unique crowd uh, attending. I would say it's one third crypto enthusiasts, one third corporates, and another third investors. Well, here we're doing um, one more in November. We had the last one in April, in April, and we're trying uh, to keep on going with our uh, event series. Now, the second um, activity that we thought is important to launch when it comes to incubation is called Crypto Valley Labs. We call it the home for blockchain. Now, when we when we started to um, um, help startups to get started uh, in Switzerland, we freed up some space in our own offices in order to have them there. Um, just to give you a number, when we did that in um, yeah, late 2016, we had about 10 blockchain startups on our premises. Today, with this second location called Crypto Valley Labs, we have over 120. This is how it looks like. And it's basically open space and private space. Now, I told you that we have roughly 120 companies based on our premises. So we wanted to know for sure how many blockchain related companies are actually in Switzerland. So we hired someone who would screen the commercial register, uh, you know, surf the web and find out who is actually in Switzerland and who is doing what. And this crypto directory, you can actually Google or uh, uh, enter that in your browser and, and browse through the categories. We now know that we have over 400 blockchain related companies in Switzerland. As you can see, there is a, a bubble around Zug and Zurich, so most of them are based out of Zug and Zurich, roughly 350. But what you also can see is that it's spreading all over Switzerland. So when the federal councillor, Johann schneider Raman said that we are going to be a blockchain nation, this is about to happen right now. Speaking of um, Johann schneider Raman. What I have just told you about the activities um, uh, that we launched, these were um, events and, and um, 
activities or actions that we could undertake on our own as a private company. But when it comes to the environment, to regulation, we need some help. That's why we are talking uh, to the authorities, to the federal government, and launched the Blockchain Task Force. So what happened is the federal councillor, Jan Schneider, he actually came to visit the Crypto Valley because he wanted to understand what's happening there. He could have sent a delegation, but he wanted to, send, to know by himself. So we organized an afternoon, we showed him some startups, we told him what's happening in Crypto Valley, and out of this uh, visit, the idea for a blockchain task force evolved. Now, what is the blockchain task force? It's a private body, it's a private organization with over 50 experts from all the stakeholders that are or will be affected by blockchain sooner or later, basically. So, it is important to have everybody involved from politics, from the legacy industry, so all the sectors of the industries, um, the startups, of course, that are building uh, the space, science, society. So, over 50 experts are in this task force. Um, two federal councillors are under patronage uh, of the task force, as well as Mr. Michel, councillor from um, the canton of Zoom. So, we have strong ties into the government. What we first had to do with the blockchain task force is we had to structure it. So, our first goal was what is the most important things that have to be addressed um, when it comes to regulation. And we created four work groups. The goal of the task force is basically to keep and increase the attractiveness and the competitiveness of Switzerland as a global blockchain hub because, of course, other jurisdictions are catching up. How to do that? We have to create legal certainty. That's why we built these four work groups, starting with ICO token, banking, cybersecurity, and applications. Applications meaning the different industries that are uh, being tackled with blockchain issues. Now we focused on ICO, ICO token and banking because this was the most urgent areas that we had to tackle. So we started our work and we were able to release the first white paper, the, the white paper of the first phase of the blockchain task force with some recommendation towards the regulator. I'm not going into detail, my colleagues uh, will tell you more about the current status of regulation but just so much, there is an uncertainty when it comes to actually transferring the tokens, whether the underlying value actually gets transferred or not. That you can do that by changing the law or not changing the law. Let me point out one specific recommendation. It's our three faceted token map. Um, as you have heard already today, if I'm not wrong, we have three let's say four categories of tokens, the security, the asset tokens, the payment tokens, and the utility tokens, and the hybrid tokens. And even though we have these guidelines from FINMA, there's some sort of uncertainty when it comes to the, you know, to the tokens in between these categories. So what we are going to release is a token map that will help you to find your token in a way that it serves the regulator. So, on the left side, you can see the design map. This is basically the map that the startups use, right? So, the space will keep inventing new tokens every day. This will happen also in the future. What the regular, regulator needs to know is, in what category does a token actually fall? What, what does it correspond to? So that's the, the relationship between the design map and the regulatory map. And then there is the investor who has a different take on a token because he wants to know what's the risk affiliated with my token. And these three maps, they have to interact. And this is one of the um, products 
that the blockchain task force will release. Um, since yesterday, by the way, you can download the white paper in English. It is online and you can uh, get it here, blockchaintaskforce.ch. Um, I'm about to finish my uh, short presentation with a take, a startup take on Switzerland because we have screened over a thousand projects that came to Crypto Valley or Zook. And each and every one we asked, why do you come to Zook? And this is basically what they were saying. Number one was, we come to Zook because it's Zook, Switzerland, or paradise. Why did they say that? Not only because of the great landscape, but this is great, but because it's very stable, it is safe, it is open-minded, and don't forget, we have decentralization and consensus in our DNA based on the democratic system, which is very appealing to the projects. Number two is the service-oriented authorities. So this is reflected by the startups very strongly. They're very goal-oriented. For example, if you, if you have a challenge and you need assistance, you call them up and you can talk to them and they will, they will want to understand what your challenge is and they want to help you tackle it. Number three, the ecosystem. I think this is really unique compared to other hubs. It might not be the biggest ecosystem when it comes to people living in Zouk, but for example, when you go to a meetup in Zouk, um, I would say of 100 people, 50 are founders, project leaders, thought leaders, so you can talk to them, you can ask them, what are we working on? Um, can we collaborate? I think this is really unique uh, besides the service providers and the existing experience and expertise uh, in Zoom. And last but not least, it's a very international city. There is an existing expat community, so it's not hard to accommodate, right? Everybody speaks English and it's really easy to get along. So I hope I was able to um, tell you a bit about what's happened at Crypto Valley and what we are doing. We are Lakeside Partners. My name is Matthias. If you have any questions, please reach out through email or telegram.